my first movie. I just got into filmmaking recently. Uh, it's about a group of crack addicts in Atlanta. It was just a real crazy situation. I used to go to work by there every day. It's right by Spelman and, and Morehouse and all that stuff, actually. And it just looked real crazy. It's kind of reminiscent of like an African refugee camp. Like, I don't know. So if you guys will see, and then let me know what you think afterwards. If you like a short Q and A, so if you have any questions, let me know. My name is Seventeen. I've been on the streets for 21 years due to crack, cocaine, and heroin. I started off like at 21 years old. I started using heroin. My dad introduced me to the like the pimping stuff, but with the pimping stuff. Gold drugs. You know the stories about people. As long as you got crack, the holes are there. It's not. It's not like it used to be because the girls don't walk no more. It's all about the dealing it. It's all about escort service. You know? So I mess with these white girls and I'm doing dope. I find myself, I lose my car, my house, everything. Like overnight. But I was on the cover smoking. I like smoked and got high on the weekend. Then I start smoking to get high Monday. Then I skip and start smoking, get high Wednesday. Then all of a sudden, boom, I'm missing work. Boom, there you go. I start smoking every day. I gotta sit down because my leave to get it out. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get this ability right now. That's smoke That's pill pot out of LA right there. What's cracker like? He done fell off too. Oh. He done fell off. Hell oh, yeah, I've got to tell you, I used to have a grill like this. Dope took that motherfucker. Don't make your teeth fall out? Yeah, don't make your teeth fall out. <laughs> yeah. Man, we're on a crack. Is the number out? Let me see all these. Nah, nah, two by five. Come on, man. Everybody you see with Still that smoke crack. Don't you see your teeth right in front? making progress. All right. Yeah. I don't know how to develop the trust. Like the first day I came out there with like mad equipment, like a mic and lights and all that shit. And it was mad sketchy, like who is this dude, the cops? So I came back like a few hours later with just my camera, just like that. And just started talking to him. And then like, uh, after like the second day, he started opening up to me. I shot for three days. Well, my dad is a crackhead. So I kind of dealt with that like my whole life. And it's just is something that's kind of like forgotten. like. People are like, who does crack anymore? It's kind of, it's not really any light shined on it anymore like it was in like the 80s or anything. So that was it. And just mainly walking to work every day, I had to pass that area. And I just be like, man, this is crazy. This just looks crazy. Like, even when I filmed, like when I finally filmed, like, uh, it looked a little different because the government comes like every month and throws away all their couches and stuff. But when I first saw it, it looked like, like literally like a living room. So it was just crazy. I don't know, I, I grew up in the hood, so I'm completely desensitized to all this stuff. Like, a lot of people find it intriguing and, and crazy, but to me, it's just life. It, it wasn't really trying to be informative. I was just trying to really give an unbiased approach. I wasn't saying these homeless people were bad, or the city was bad, or the drug dealers was bad. It was just, like, diagnosing, diagnosing what was going on in that area. I was just, it's just raw footage to me. Like, I didn't want to really pick a side. It's really up to you guys. Part of it is that a lot of us understand that people choose, they make an individual choice sometimes to choose to do drugs to a certain extent, but a lot of it is probed and influenced and intersects with other things and like abuse, homelessness, loss, um, you know, feeling unjust by the system, a lot of different things. And a lot of it for me just shows the fact that it's not just one entity, it's a number of things that intersect to produce a behavior. And so there's a lot of things that influence what someone chooses to or not to do and what they get involved in. And I think a lot of treatment programs that are out there right now just focus on the individual's choice to choose to do drugs. They don't focus on all these other things that also have an impact. You know, a lot of these people talk about, I want to get clean, I want to get clean. But once they get clean, it's very difficult to deal with a lot of the things that help pressure them toward the choice to do drugs.